Atlanta United Fan TV, 5-0 win. I mean, definitely we didn't expect that at all. I think uh, we were, some of us, even expecting a loss. But sure. I think uh, the guys brought home the goods against a 10-man dynamo. Took advantage of it. And uh, yeah. I think, yeah, I mean, it, what a beautiful game, man. Absolutely. I and mean, look, from the beginning, I mean, even before the red card, uh, you know, they were creating chances. I mean, I, literally the first possession. And, who, you know, you have Gressel making an interception and uh, almost getting, I think, an assist or it, getting involved, though. Right. But, you know, uh, that's important because we saw Gressel play at right back today. And right wing back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. True, true, true. But, uh, but we talked about, you know, maybe how to get the best out of Gressel. And we talked about where we're where the boy has been using him yeah. and he, here you go you know what i mean and he looked he looked comfortable he was decisive mm -hmm. uh particularly with his crossing you know he he's one of the best crossers in the league i think for sure uh he racked up 14 assists last year for a reason he got two today for that same reason so i'm and a goal yeah. and a goal exactly yeah i think for me man in the match really happy for him um and in general i mean like everybody getting involved hyman getting involved yeah. nagby i mean the starting the sequence for the first goal and then finishing it i mean yeah. it it was Darlington Nagby that scored, it right? It was Darlington. Nagby. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah right. I think that like, mean, I think that mean needs all, an update. Yeah. I know. Right. No. Well, I mean, it's still only one goal. But <laughs> still. Right. Yeah. No. But very, very happy for him as well. Um, you yeah. know. No. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No. I mean, it's. Uh, I think everybody got involved, yeah. but uh, definitely we we got a little lucky maybe that so. uh, Ellis uh, or Elise. Got a little hot-headed. Uh, I mean, it's a small bump, but it's a bump nonetheless, and he's uh, he's sent off. To me, it's not about the bump, you know. Like again, and this is all within the opening like five or ten minutes, right? But you have so the Atlanta United has a goal kick. Guzan puts the ball down. I think number fourteen it was kicks it away, and so the referee has a talking to him. And we've seen teams, and we've complained about this. Come here, shit house. Have the refs like not do anything, not be strong. Yeah. The ref in this situation showed strength. And at least gets involved in that conversation for some. He has an extended conversation with the ref, so right away he's annoying him. Then there's the foul on uh, LGP. He kicks the ball away. That's an automatic yellow. Whatever happened after that, the fact is he provoked the ref multiple times in a short space of time. I think he got as much as he deserved. It's a shame from a neutral standpoint. It's certainly a shame from a Houston standpoint because he had a big job to do. And their best chance, their best moment, they almost scored before Atlanta did because at least had Parkhurst one-on-one -on, -one on the wing, played a nice ball in. It's, so at the end of the day, he screwed his team. But, uh, you know, the last time Atlanta faced 10 men, they lost. Yeah. So, you know, it's not, that's never a guarantee. And especially how teams approach, you know, being down 10 men, bunkering, especially when you lose your striker. Mm -hmm. But uh, Atlanta, no, put them to the sword, man. Two quick goals. When that second goal scored, I thought the, the manner and the ease with which we scored it, I thought maybe seven was on the cards. But five, I'll absolutely take, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's the first time we score more than three goals yeah. in this season. Uh, I think, yeah, it's fantastic to see. Atlanta being ruthless yeah. in front of goal because, yeah, we've been absolutely lacking that this season. Exactly. And to also get a clean sheet, yeah. it's got to feel good for the confidence going into some tough fixtures absolutely. coming up against D.C., against LAFC. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, and now, you know, when <laughs> when we saw the lineup, I think – I think in our heads it was more of just to get through this fixture, and it turned out as well as it could have, I think. Yeah. So, so you know, now looking at Sunday, looks like we're, we're definitely going to have Escobar back. Yeah. Probably Ambrose. I think those are your starting fullbacks. Uh -huh. And in terms of, you know, I know we've been missing players in terms of the attack, but I think that it, they should. What, the point I was making on the podcast is that they should still be able to create nice goals. Like, the, the team play should be there, and there's yeah. good depth there, right? Mm -hmm. And so we've seen Miriam come and make an impact. We've seen Hyman come and make an impact. Dion Pereira has looked good in cameos. So now all of a sudden, De Boer has options. PD came, PD got rested in a 5 0 win. And, I, you know, I'm not saying that the team is better without him by any stretch, but it's because he's played well the, the last two matches, yeah. you know? So it's. He came on with energy yeah, and looking to created, make things happen. Yeah, almost created a goal himself, you know? I mean, Joseph scoring again. I don't know if uh, y'all were looking at those goal charts, but Joseph is second. Uh, he's first among humans because what Carlos Vela is doing is... Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and he's scored in six straight. Yeah, exactly. 15 goals, though. I mean, like, so Joseph back, you know? Joseph's back. Yeah, you know, so, yeah, I think uh, a lot of things are setting up really well, especially for, yeah, these uh, these next few weeks. You know, like, like yes, there's a huge caveat with this fixture, yeah. but I think there are certainly positives that you can take from it and, uh, op you know, reason for optimism going forward. Atlanta!